Hello everyone and welcome to another in my armor corrected build video series thingamajig. I will say um, starting up classes during the summer has been very very tiring. So I'm just now starting to feel a little better after the first few days of school. But uh here to show you a video. And so today we'll be talking about my light reverse joint and um It's pretty fun. Really fast, really kind of ridiculous and silly. And it's one of the uh, early builds that I made on Verdict Day that turned out to be really good. And then I've slowly improved it a little bit, and now it's kind of what it is now. But uh, it is a very popular type of build, so don't be surprised if you run into someone else who uses something very similar. Although it is somewhat rare compared to other types. So then, uh, the idea behind this build is basically you got uh, two shotguns, two hit machine guns, and then something in the shoulder. And for me, that something in the shoulder is flash rockets. And also, if you're paying attention, you probably noticed that my entire build is Cherno themed with the white and blue color scheme, the Circle 9 on the front, and uh, Baka written in Japanese on the front. Still don't know if I need to write that in Katakana or Hiragana, but whatever. I'm pretty sure Hiragana is fine. Now then, um, so there's not too much to talk about I me. Mean, like, uh, there's a lot of parts on this AC that I kind of picked for personal preference and style rather than actual performance. So I'll talk about like what the ideal choices would probably be later. All right. So then. Let's look at the parts. First, we're the first thing we're going to talk about is the weapons. Now, these shotguns, um, they've actually been nerfed, but they're still really good. And what they do is they fire very quickly, and they do decent damage per shot. So if you're doing decent damage really fast, you're doing a lot of damage. So that's what's nice about them. Also, because they're shotguns and they're KE, their damage is mostly unmitigated. Uh, there's very few builds that actually have any real resistance to KE damage, especially when you're... F because rapid fire KE damage is one of the most effective ways to do damage. And uh, that's why Gatling guns and rifles are still decent. Or actually, no, rifles not so much, but Gatling guns are really good. Uh, shotguns are really good. And, uh, and pretty much anything that's rapid fire hits a lot of times is pretty good. That's why autocannons are so good too. And, um, yeah, I have two of them because I like to duel them. You could tune these for accuracy or power. I tune them for power because I like hitting stuff a little bit harder and being a little bit more efficient with my ammo. But accuracy is also a pretty good way to go about it. Now the flash rocket. There's only two flash rockets in the game, uh, and I went for this one because it reloads a little better. It reloads a little faster, and I believe it has a higher cruising speed. Yeah, it does. So it's a, it's a reloads a little faster, it's a little more accurate. Also does a tiny bit more damage, but who cares about the damage that you do with flash rockets? It's kind of minuscule anyway. So yeah. Uh, flash rockets are cool, and basically what they do is that when you hit someone with them, their FCS is turned off for a period of time. And when their FCS is turned off, they can't target you with their attacks, and they can't shoot missiles at you if those missiles require a lock-on. So all they can do is kind of blind fire their arm weapons. Although if they have automatic if they have automatic seeking missiles, then they don't care because they can just keep shooting those. So there's that. Um, the other flash rockets, uh, I don't know. I don't know if they're good for anything. They're very light, but that's about it. Uh, these two heat machine guns, these two are really cool because they just, uh, they're kind of similar to the shotguns in that they don't do like as much damage per hit as possible, but they fire very, very, very quickly, and they also have a lot of ammo. And the, a lot of ammo is kind of important for this AC because the shotguns go through their ammo very quickly, and, uh, because 35 shots if you're firing once a second is 35 seconds. So, yeah, you're gonna go through the ammo very quickly. So the 450 shots per each of these heat machine guns over here, the G39, is really important. And it basically means that if I run out of heat, uh, if I run out of uh, shotgun ammo, I can use these for the same thing, more or less. They don't do damage as quickly as a shotgun, simply because they only fire one shot at a time. Like in the time that a shotgun can fire 10 pellets, uh, these heat machine guns can fire, what, like, 4 or 5? And they do about the same amount of damage. So yeah. But the other advantage to having these heat machine guns is that because they're CE damage and they have high enough CE damage, if you find enemy lightweights or if someone is using like a KE shield to block your shotguns, then you can rip off shields and you can destroy lightweights this way. Heat machine guns are really, really good. They're some of the best weapons in the game. They're really easy to use on pretty much anything. The only problem with them is that they're kind of short range and not too accurate. Um, as for tunings on heat machine guns, you always want to go for power. Like There's pretty much no time you want to go for any tuning other than power because their attack power is already very low. And if you don't raise their attack power any higher, then you're not going to do much. Rapid tuned uh, G39s are kind of hilarious though, because they have the, fire, the fastest fire rate. You just kind of like spray a rain of bullets everywhere. Kind of hilarious. Uh, this head, I picked it because it looks good and it fits. And it brings my KE above 1500, which is important because if your KE is below 1500, that means uh, rifles can wreck your shit. 
so not getting wrecked by rifles is pretty good. Uh, this core I picked it because it fits the style of the AC, um, not because it's good. Uh, this core over here would actually probably fit like the playstyle a little bit better because it has more AP and all that stuff and it doesn't wear that much more. But um, yeah, there's there's no real reason to go for the 309 over the 215, but I just kind of will with it because I can. Also because I have my decals on it already, I don't want to do those again. It looks good. It looks it looks better. Uh, arms, these I picked because, as the description says, they're high they have high durability and lightweight. So they've got better armor than most, and they also have um, they also don't weigh very much, and they also don't have terribly high energy consumption compared to other uh, uh, CE arms either. Because if you look at like say these right here, this have 1500, the other ones have 1300. So the lower uh, energy consumption, lower weight is good, along with the high armor and well, it's not so much high armor as it is uh, high AP. That's what I, that's what I meant. And so the high AP combined with their low weight makes them pretty useful for this type of AC. They also have decent defenses and really high firing stability, which is good. And they have one shoulder slot, which is important for you know using them. Initially, my build used to run the um, Cultural Model 2 arms. I think the retrofit versions in particular. Because they have really high firing stability, but um, giving up the shoulder slot and also having lower defenses isn't really worth it. Although the Cultural arms are still really good, it's just that the shoulder slot is really good on most ACs. There's very few ACs where you don't want to have a shoulder at all. Legs, I went for the fisherman legs because they have high loading capacity. Not really because they have high loading capacity actually, but because they have um, really high turning and really high speed. And um, the Sarawibi? Uh, Sarawibi. Sa there we go. Wait, no, 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 wait, no. I just took Japanese. Sarawibi. I always want to say Sarawibi or something in the chat. I blame people. But Sarawibi. So yeah, so these retrofit legs, they have more speed, but they also have less loading capacity, so then you can't use the rockets combined with the other things. And they also have significantly worse turning performance. I mean, it's overweight, so you can't really tell, but without, um, they're, when they're both underweight, the the difference in turning between them is like 150 to 200 points, usually. I also could go for one of these, which is probably the smarter choice, but uh, I don't know, I just felt like... Uh, I, just li I like the extra 25 points of speed I get out of using the fisherman. Uh, forehead legs, uh, forehead legs are cool but not very useful. Because uh, building defense on something this light is not particularly amazing. Uh, I went for this FCS because it's super wide. That's the only real reason I went for it. You could easily go, f if you wanted to do like some kind of hybrid missile build, you could use the 303 FCS and then slap a missile on the shoulder. I like, uh, are there any missiles that even fit on this thing? Yeah, these, no, those don't. Yeah, but those are the good ones. Actually, wait, let's see. If if it's close enough, it might work. Yeah, it does. Okay. So yeah, without modifying it, you could actually switch to a missile build. Which I guess isn't a bad idea. I mean, these missiles are really good. But uh, I went for the flash rockets because it's fun. It's a pretty versatile build because it has so much allowance for weight. Although, also, the wide FCS helps with shotguns. Especially when you're moving at super high speeds because you're going almost 400 high boost. I don't know what that means, but it's a it's really high number. Now for the generator and booster, those are pretty much preference just because you have enough load capacity to fit pretty much any type of generator or booster on here, but um, you also have enough natural speed on this AC to go for pretty much any booster you like. So really, whatever you're comfortable with is what you go for. I personally went for Makabashita 3 and the Tokonatsu, also known as the... this is also known as the San generator. And the uh, reason I went for these is because it lets me have tons of energy if I want to rush someone down really fast, but it also doesn't mean I'm going to run out of energy permanently at any time. I also have a PvP uh, bit that I'll add at the end, so you can see some of that. And recon is recon, so that's that. So now then, now um, now I can talk a little bit about like different alternate options for the parts. For heads, assuming you went for oops, assuming you went for like this core or something else that would bring your KE up, you could probably go for a CE head to get more speed. But um, I went for this for style points, so let's see if I were to go for that and then that, yeah, that would still bring you up above 1500. But you don't look as cool. And you know, here we gotta look cool. Um, pretty much good heads would be anything that's lightweight and gives you decent stability. Really? I mean, the. Is this the right one? Yeah, this uh, HDYFO is actually a really good head that you should remember. Because it's super light, and it's not quite as good as the Beowulf head in terms of raw speed, or the Umage Model 1. 
but it offers a lot of good stats in addition to having really good scanning. And the good scanning is important if you have like five or six different uh, weapons on your AC, so you want to know what your enemy's weak to. So having high scanning is really important. So the HDYF void is actually a good head that I would recommend to most people. Uh, it's just not as fast as the Umage series. It also has really terrible defenses. As for alternate KE heads, you could go for the HDK uh, T11, also known as the Lancelot head in the previous game. Uh, this is a good head that has uh, really high health and really high stability, so you maintain decent speed. In fact, it actually increases my speed over the uh, HF or whatever the fuck. Yeah, HF two two seven. So yeah, the this one actually increases my speed a little bit, but it also reduces my defenses. So yeah, it's a fair trade-off. It's a good head. I like it. It looks stylish too. It doesn't like having a big pointy helmet. Uh, this is also an option because it's super light. It would similarly increase speed, but it would reduce defenses even further. Um, I mean, really, the head, that you, the head and the core parts, the or the frame parts that you pick for this AC really depend on uh, what you want to use it for. If you plan on rushing someone from the front, then you're probably going to want to have a little bit more health and a little more defense. Whereas if you plan on staying behind someone and get going for maximum speed, then you might build it like I did, where all the parts are very minimalistic. Arms, uh, pretty much any of the CE arms, really. Like I said, because there's a lot of versatility with this AC. You can pretty much put any part that you want on it to make it work the way you want. Um, I mean, the only parts I really like wouldn't recommend is like the uh, like the W48 and the whatever its counterpart is, uh, the W52, W48, W52, because they increase your defenses, but they also cut in, they also weigh a lot more, and they uh, they reduce the firing stability. And firing stability is kind of important for this AC because. The shotguns and heat machine guns both benefit a lot more from fire instability than most weapons do, so having high fire instability makes it, it improves your DPS and makes you more of a threat. So that's important. Uh, as I mentioned previously with the legs, you can pretty much go for the Fisherman, the LRLB legs, or the Sawadabi. 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 I can... I will eventually learn to pronounce that. Maybe it's just because there's so many A's in it, like Sawadabi. I don't know, it's a tongue twister, you try saying it three times fast. Uh, FCS, like I mentioned before, if you want to go for a missile build, you can throw on the 303. Or if you're feeling crazy, you can throw on the E28. I don't. I think the 303 is going to be a little more suited to it, because the um, the lower energy drain will help a lot when you're using uh, your weapons, because your weapons involve you holding down triggers, so that means you're going to spend more time in combat mode than you usually would. So, drain on stuff like FCS, your weapons, your... Yeah, FCS your weapons, your arms is more important when you have a lot of combat mode time. I would not recommend the 215 or any of the long range FCSs because they're just too small. You want to go for the, the 19 or wider FCSs because it'll make the shotguns more effective. If you go for something else it'll work, sort of, but not quite as well as you might think. Uh, generators, as I mentioned before, pretty much anything you like will work. Um, if you're short on weight and you, I mean, because like because the fisherman legs that I picked have such high load capacity, you can go for pretty much anything. Like I think you can even go for the um, super heavy one. Yeah, you can go, even go for no this one. Yeah, you can even go for this one if you want to. I don't know why you would, but you can. And basically, yeah, you have a lot of options there because there's just so much weight on this. I'll talk about the booster because that's something that actually affects the way the thing plays. Um, I go for this booster because it gives me the most like overall speed for like a continuous amount of time, whereas the L13 gives you a lot of speed in a short period and the H11 is a more of like a low power, more efficient version. And um, for acceleration boosters these would all work just fine. I used to use the 214 with a high power or a high uh, output generator, but I decided that I wanted more speed and wanted to go faster, so I wanted to, so I put that in. Uh, you could also go for the 309, but it just doesn't feel right to me. Like, if, you, if, you, if you're gonna have this little armor, you gotta you gotta go fast. And um, when you're the strongest AC around, you have to be fast. Uh, alternate shotguns. Uh, this is something I actually have something I can say about. So basically, the um, the Kudenai Model 2 is a really good shotgun, but the Kudenai Model 1 is kind of slightly better. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you that right now. It has slightly less damage and slightly slower fire rate but it has slightly better lock and muzzle velocity and the main improvement is that, that slight increase in the in the muzzle velocity and if you go for like oh wait I didn't I didn't I never made an acceleration tune of things I don't know why but because I just never use them so they're kind of stubby looking 
But um, basically, the main thing about them is that they have uh, they ha they're going to have slightly less DPS, but they're also going to be a little bit more accurate. So if you're having a hard time hitting someone, then grab the model ones instead of the model twos. Uh, I like the model twos because they just look cool. Because they're not as they're not all stubby like the Google, like the model ones. As for other shotguns, um, if you want to go for DPS, then the Kuda 9 models are pretty much the only things you want to go for. Although AM SGA 108 and AM SGA 204 are both really good shotgun models, so if you want to use those, those are, those will work just fine. I wouldn't recommend the um, is BO4 or BO8 or 103 or 203 because they're just bad. Uh, 203 and 103 have no ammo. BOA and BO4 are very slow, and uh, they all BOA and BO4 also have really low pellet counts because there's an important stat you can see on shotguns. <laughs> Excuse me. So um, if you look at the scatter shot count, that tells you the number of pellets you're going to fire. And when you're doing uh, when you're not doing enough damage to punch through someone's armor, then the scatter shot count becomes more important than the damage per shot or the damage per pellet. So having a high scatter shot count is really important, and that's why the 204 is really good, even though it has low damage and it's kind of slow, it just has 15 shots, so it's going to do more damage overall. In fact, I think it does the most damage overall against like high armor targets, because it just hits so many times. Um, muzzle velocity on the 204 and 108, I believe. Yeah, on the 108 and 204 is going to be a lot better. It's also going to be better on the BO8 and BO4, but the BO8 and BO4 have really long reload times of 180 which is like 3 or 4 seconds in real time I think and that's a little too slow for viable combat use because you're not doing a lot of damage per shot and you're not doing that damage very often though they also have slow lock on times so they're just not great shotguns they're, they're, they're really cool for playing through the story mode though because they look stylish as fuck because you got 4 barrels and you also they're gonna like one shot most uh, like small like uh, like cannon fodder enemies but otherwise they're not particularly great also made this weird accuracy tune one for some reason. I don't know why. But they're trying to find like the most possible accurate one. All right. Well, um, then what else can I say? Not too much else to say about these. I mean, the 108 is a really good one. It's slow. It's a little weaker than the 208 or 204. Yeah, it's a little weaker than 2 than the SGA 204, but it's uh, it's faster and it's more accurate. So. It's overall going to get a similar di similar DPS. It just depends on which one you like better, which is more to your choosing. And then these, like these, actually have really good stats, except that they have like that one only has 17 shots, which is like half of the shots of this thing. And this thing already has a little, little ammo, and um, it does really good damage per shot, but it also only has six scatter shot. And that six scatter shot is really what hurts it the most, because that basically means that even when you're like punching through armor. Uh, because someone has like really low KE defense, you're not really going to be doing a lot of damage because you're only hitting them 6 times as opposed to 8, 10, 12, or 15. And so if those things had like a larger scatter shot, I would actually probably be willing to use them with like some ammo reserves, but they just don't do any damage and they're really slow. Like 169 reload time is really bad. Uh, 130 over here is pretty bad. Like right here, the 76 is really, really fast. 180 is terrible. 155 is like on the upper edge of bad. But it's still it's still usable. Uh, this 85 is okay. It's really good. And then uh, oh, this 123. So this is like I personally think that like the 108 is like kind of like in the sweet spot of all the shotguns. It's one of the best shotguns. It's one of the first ones you get. So make good use of it. It's a good shotgun. But for raw DPS, I will say once again the Kudenai Model 2 is really good. As for alternates in the shoulder, uh, flash rockets are good. Heat rockets can work if you know how to use them. I don't. But if you know how to use heat rockets, then throw them on. They're, they're, they're cool. Uh, rock, regular rockets are too heavy. Uh, KE missiles are already too heavy. Some CE missiles will fit, um, like the smaller, so the smaller short-range missiles. Some of the stealth missiles will fit, and uh, AS missiles will fit because they're all pretty light. Although um, with with missiles, it kind of depends, really. I don't think the missiles fit with the playstyle of this AC, so I don't use them. But they should work. Uh, plasma missiles, the Jupiter is a really good missile, you should try it out. And uh, I actually found that out when I was you know, test building something for someone the other day. Uh, bomb dispensers are hilarious as fuck, and they're actually really good if you know how to use them. But um, they're not really better than like rockets, they're just like hilarious because they stun people and they make their screen go all funny. 
They're really good on Unix. If you like Unix, throw bomb throw like dual slot bomb dispensers on Unix and just make the Unix spam the bombs everywhere. And they're hilarious. Optical chaff, I wish it was good. I, I wish it was good. It used to be good in the previous game, it's terrible, now it's completely useless. Main reason being that its duration is shit. Because the effective duration that's the uh, the longest one here is six hundred, which is like I think that's like ten seconds maybe. But the um the chaff effect it also has the weakest chaff effect. And so the other one, this one has like three seconds or two seconds or some shit like that. This one has like maybe three or two three or four. And um yeah, they're not great. They also have like because their reload time is so long, there's always gonna be a period where the chaff isn't active and it's not good. The the because like you can you shouldn't have to cast it you should or you shouldn't have to use it like once every ten seconds and especially since this one only has two uses so that means you're only good for twenty seconds out of a ten minute match like that's that's terrible or this one this one's uh, eight so that means you'd get like forty seconds out of a twenty minute match or this one you get five so that means you would get like fifteen twenty seconds out of a forty minute match not a 40 minute, 20 minute match, but what I'm, what I'm saying is they 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 don't last l nearly long enough to be worth using, and they're also weaker. They, they, I mean, they increase the um, the effect of them, but because they're so short, like they're just not they're just not viable. Uh, CIWS is actually a really good choice for this AC if you're scared of missiles and you can't dodge them, like a pro because you're not boss enough. But uh, if you can't dodge missiles, then uh, CIWS will become your friends very quickly because they're very good at dealing with missiles. The only problem is that you have to be in in combat mode for the CIWS to intercept anything. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Auto attack guns, um, they're kind of silly. I mean, they do work, but they are—they're not particularly amazing. Uh, reserve mags is actually one of the. Th this is one of the few times I'm going to bring up the reserve mags and say it's actually a really good idea because since the shotguns have little ammo, and that's really their only drawback outside of being kind of short range. Uh, bringing these um, Moratorium Model Two will make it so that your 35 shots is going to go up to like. Um, I mean, it's basically it's like a it's like a straight multiplier for your things, but I know it gives you like 70 shots or something like that. I just can't find my uh, calculator to make it work. Let me let me see. Let me bring it up. 35 times 1.8. So you got 63 shots. So yeah, 63 shots is pretty much enough to kill anything that moves. Um, like 35 shots is enough to kill maybe two ACs, 63 would easily be enough to kill an entire squad if you're a good shot. So the Muratory Mall 2 is actually a pretty good option if you don't feel like you're going to use the flash rockets. It basically means you're not going to run out of ammo anytime soon and it also means that your uh, heat machine guns become pretty much like super spammable until the end of time. Subcomputers, no. Uh, energy amps, no. UAVs, no. Uh, now I put my flash rockets back on. Okay, now for the heat machine guns, alternates for these. Um, you can realistically run anything that's lightweight enough to fit in here, like heat howitzers or um, pistols, I guess. Heat howitzers, pistols, pulse machine guns, blade weapons would all work. But um, heat machine guns are just easy to use and really effective. Now, for other models of heat machine gun that I would recommend, uh, there's you can pretty much use any of them again. But the one like the two models that I think are the two best are the Kayak and the G39. The G39 because it has really high ammo, a good and good DPS, even when you're not really hitting effective damage, and the Kayak because it hits most things for effective damage, and it's really accurate. It's more, like the Kayak is just like the most like well balanced one, so it's really easy to use on pretty much anything. It's also the first one you get, so if you don't know what to stick in your slots, you can pretty much throw a Kayak on anything and it'll be helpful. Uh, and then this uh, another word here, the MO5. Uh, yeah, MO5. Uh, MO5 and G39 are basically counterparts of each other, whereas the MO5 like hits a little bit harder and has way more ammo than you could ever possibly use, but it's also slower. So MO5 is a decent option. It also looks kind of cool because it's bigger, and it looks kind of like some weird dual barrel thing. But uh, it's a good weapon if you want to use it. It's a little bit more accurate, other stuff like that. Like uh, let me show off the difference in accuracy between the G39 and the Kayak real quick. So the Kayak has 427 muzzle velocity and the G39 has 348. And the Kayak still isn't that accurate, but it's, it's, it's accurate enough to catch most things and it's pretty good at that. And that combined with its good, with its decent rate of fire and good damage means it's a really good weapon. So yeah, if you find that the G39s aren't doing it for you, grab a Kayak. Uh, Kalong is a decent weapon, it, it hits hard, it's the hardest hitting of all the heat machine guns, but most people either block the Kayak and the Kalong or neither. So the Kalong's extra damage is pretty rare. It's pretty rare that it actually becomes useful. 
and it's slower and less accurate, so it's not that great. It looks good though. It's a cool looking weapon, I, I will say that. It's stylish as fuck. And then the G37 is basically like the baby version of the G39. It's a little bit slower and it hits a little bit harder, but it has like no accuracy. Because the muzzle velocity is worse. That's really it. I mean, otherwise it's a decent weapon. I mean, they're all decent weapons, really. It's just, uh, the G39 stands out for having the highest fire rate, and the Kayak stands out for being the most accurate and most balanced. Otherwise, uh, there's not too much else I can say about that. So now I'm going to hop into a quick AC test, and uh, then after that, I'll go into the PvP section of the video. Hopefully you enjoy that. Uh, Let's just show off how mean I can be with flash rockets. Because, uh, why not? Flash rockets are fun against tanks. Uh, tanks, quads, heavy bipedals, they all hate flash rockets because they have bigger hitboxes and they have a hard time dodging the rockets. Oops, that was terrible. Anyway, uh, one of the things I'm going to bring up right now is that because this is a light reverse joint, you can change elevation very quickly. So if I want to, I can just jump way up into the air and dodge anything that was going to hit where I was two seconds ago. Nope, completely missed with that flash rocket. Missed again. And so even though these shotguns don't do a lot per shot, I mean they don't do a lot per pellet, what I mean. Um, even though they don't do like a terrible, a terrible much per pellet, they hit hard enough and they fire really fast to be a much to be a threat, right? And so if you're fighting a quad, all you gotta do is kind of just float circles around them and laugh maniacally as you shred their own little pieces. You can also do the same thing with heat machine guns, or with the heat machine guns in reserve, but it does take a lot longer if you're fighting heavy units like tanks or quads. So the main threat is really not so much whether you can kill the enemy, but whether the enemy can kill you. And if the enemy can kill you easily, then you have to play a lot more carefully. So like as an example of that, let's load up a UNAC. Uh, let's see if I can find a UNAC that um, can properly threaten this AC. I mean, anything that has like enough defense to um, block out the heat machine guns and is also fast enough to re not really care too much about the shotguns is a pretty good threat for the CC. So, do I have any good threatening ACs? Not really. All right. Um, we'll do the real tank because this tank is real. This tank will wreck your shit if you're not careful. Alright. Also, my favorite thing about this AC is just how stupid fast it is. This thing used to be a Permaglide AC, but then I decided that wasn't fast enough, and so I made it faster. Also, pretty much anything that touches you in this AC will kind of hurt, no matter how much you build up its defenses, just because, uh, I mean, unless you, like, stick it on four le forehead legs or something which I guess would help the defense out. But yeah, so this AC actually, this tank right here actually has like really high defenses compared to like most tanks that people use because it's a heavy tank. And so as you saw there, it kind of died pretty quick. And uh, most tanks will suffer a similar fate. So this AC is kind of a good tank killer. It's really good against quads because quads are even worse than tanks in terms of turning around to shoot you <laughs> because they have a really hard time turning. Uh, heavy reverse joints will hate you. Heavy, heavy bipedals will fight back a little bit better because they're a little bit faster and have a little better turning. But um, heavy reverse joints, quads, tanks, those all are going to hate this AC. And then anything that is weak to heat machine guns is also probably going to hate you because uh, heat machine guns are just a huge fucking threat. So then, now I'm going to go into the PvP portion of the video. Hello and welcome to the PvP portion of the video. PvP. I can say PvP. So then, uh, this is uh, out of several matches that were had the other day, and this is one of the best ones I had, and it's also the worst one where I win. So uh, I guess that's a good reason to include it. I think there were several matches where I kind of just died by jumping out of the edge, because I'm going so fast. So that's not a good thing, usually. And so, I think there's like two instances here where I use my flash rockets to basically lock down someone and put them right at the end. So right here I got enemy lightweight who's very very light and has like no defenses whatsoever really. And yeah, that would be Diagon I believe. 
And uh, this is obviously this is a free battle, so there's more people here than usual. So we had a bunch of fun, a bunch of battles. Yeah, I tried to use my flashlight because I don't think I was getting any good hits with him though. And here, since he's not able to get out of the way for, of my heat machine guns fast enough, he's taking a lot of damage. In fact, he took like almost half of his health and damage for over like 15, 20 seconds or something like that. There's that. Uh, now up here on top of the tower is Mario using a uh, howitzer tank because howitzers are kind of dangerous, although they're not as dangerous as the sniper cans just because they're not very accurate. And they do a lot of damage over wide area, but they're not very accurate. Uh, there, my shotguns missed because Mario moved too fast and got behind cover. Uh, there, like half the shotgun uh, spread missed. And there, I got most of the shot. And there, more of the shot. And so I'm not really able to get close enough to reliably damage Mario just because Mario's above me and moving around in the tower is really awkward. I don't like this map very much. It's really awkward to move around on it. If it were for the tower in the middle, I would actually really like this map, but the tower is kind of annoying. And so right there, since I really can't do anything to Mario, switch back to my heat machine guns, and we're gonna go find Daigon and beat him up again with my heat machine guns. Because we're immune. <laughs> Battle Royales are fun, because they they evolve the most chaos. Although, uh, like, serious duels are fun too, I just, there's not a lot of good ACs to have serious duels in. Right here, so he's caught in the. Uh, he got himself caught in the tower for a little bit. And so here, since I have more AP than him and faster, uh, and faster heat machine guns, I'm just gonna approach him directly and kill him. I took a fair amount of damage in return, but since I can avoid damage for the most part, the damage didn't matter too much. It's right there. It looks like a tank. Uh, there's Mario over there who's a tank. So I need to kill Mario because Mario has a big fat tank with a lot of health. And I'm going to use my heat machine guns because they're a little more reliable for hitting at the medium ranges. And uh, that way I can do slightly better damage. And basically every time Mario gets caught on terrain or whatever, which happens a lot in this game because the terrain sometimes can be kind of awkward to navigate, um, then uh, I get free shots. And also notice that even though my, energies no my energy numbers are really low, I'm not really like using that much more energy than I normally would. My energy is going down very slowly. Just because the Tokonatsu is a very efficient booster. Alright, there, that's Rogan. Uh, Mari is dead, I don't know why, but Mari is dead. Probably should have asked why. That probably would have made it a little easier to explain. But uh, Mari is pretty dead there, so now I'm gonna go after Rogan. Because uh, he's more suitable to flash rockets, because he's working more fun. So, uh, right here, because I can flash rocket him and he can't really do too much about it. Uh, I can destroy the crap out of him, and he also has help, uh, I'm, also, I'm also getting help over here from Pondus, he was destroying the crap out of Rogan as well. And, uh, but, uh, unfortunately for him, my flash rockets and shotgun combination are a little bit too much for his, uh, tank. Especially because his tank has fairly low turning because of the legs it's on. And so he's not really able to do too much, although he can still kill me if I'm not, if I'm not careful here. But, I'm able to still get the kill. So then. I hope that was a proper display of how the AC works, and I hope you had fun with this video. Have a good day and play lots of Armored Core because it's fun. Bye!